Welcome to Learning Anatomy with Dr. Bakari. And if you are visiting this space for the first time, you are also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at how the obliterator foramen is transformed into the obliterator canal. We would be explaining how this occurs. Also, what structure is responsible for this transformation? And finally, at what point does the obliterator foramen becomes transformed into the obliterator canal? So ride on with me. So let's first look at the configuration of the obliterator foramen. The obliterator foramen is a foramen that is seen around the hip bone. The hip bone is an innominate bone that is an irregularly shaped and bilateral bone. This bone is seen to form the pelvic giddle. If you look at this image up here, this is where we have the hip bone. The hip bone is structurally made up of three bones. And following this demarcation here, created in dotted black, you see that the hip bone is divided into the ilium. This is the ilium here, harrowed in green. Then we have the ischium. This is the ischium here that is harrowed here at this point. And the last bone that forms the structural component of the hip bone is the pubic bone. And this is what is seen to be harrowed here in blue. So you see that these three bones will come together to form this irregularly shaped hip bone. And as you have one on this side, you also have another one on the other side. So let's drive in more to see where the obliterator foramen is created. We say the obliterator foramen, remember when we started with this lecture, we say it's a foramen that is created around the hip bone. So this is where we have the obliterator foramen here, harrowed in black. This is the foramen that is created at this point. Let's drive into the obliterator foramen to see the specific regions of the bones that make up the hip bone that are responsible for creating this foramen. So let's try and use this image down here and also creating the demarcation here at this point, we already know that the hip bone is formed from the fusion of three sub bones. And that we have highlighted using this copper image. So at this point here is where we have the ischium. The ischium is seen to have a body. This is where we have the body region of the ischium. And the inferior extension from the body of the ischium, we have the ischial ramus. So this is the ischial ramus here, also arrowed in yellow. The body of the ischium is what is seen to contribute to the formation of the acetabulum. The acetabulum is the indentation that is created on the lateral part of the pelvic bone. Bone. This is the fossa that receives the head of the femur. And it is through this point that the lower limb is connected to the pelvic bone. So we have an inferior extension from the body of the ischium, and this is the ischial ramus. And this is what is seen to be already at this point. If you look at the other structure here at the front, we say that at this region here, we have the pubic bone. And the pubic bone is also known to have a body. This is the body that is harrowed here in green. The body of the pubic is what creates the connection point between the two hip bones. Remember when we started this lecture, we say we have two hip bones. We have one on the right and another on the left. And these hip bones will need to be connected anteriorly. So specifically, it is in the body of the pubic here that the hip bone from the right side and the left side are connected. So at the posterior end, they are connected through the pelvic spine, which of course include the sacrum and the coccyx, while anteriorly, the two hip bones have a connection point created, specifically at the region where we have the body of the pubic. So this is the body of the pubic, and we say that at this point is where we have the connection point, and at this region here is where we have the creation of a joint that is referred to as the pubic symphysis. So if you drive further, on the body of the pubic, you see that you have a superior extension from the body and you have an inferior extension. So this is the superior extension here that is also harrowed in green. And this is referred to as the pubic ramus. And we also have an inferior extension here that is also harrowed in green. And this is also referred to as the inferior ramus. So we have superior and inferior rami. And just from mere breaking down the name, superior above and inferior below. So we have two rami extending from the body of the pubic bone. And this is what is seen to be harried here in green. So in creating the obliterator foramen, which is the hole that is created around the hip bone on one side and also on the other side, we have contribution 
from the ischial ramus. And this is the ischial ramus here, which we say is an extension from the body of the ischial. The second contribution is from the pubic bone, but specifically is from the superior pubic ramus and the inferior pubic ramus. So we have the two rami from the pubic also contributing to the formation of the obliterator foramen. So we can say that the obliterator foramen is formed by contribution from just two bones that are seen to form the structural components of the hip bone. We know that the hip bone is made up of the ilium, the ischium, and also the pubis. But out of these three bones, it is the rami from the ischium and the pubis that contributes to the formation of the obliterator foramen. If you look at the ilium, the ilium is placed here up above at this region. So it is not seen to contribute to the formation of the, this obliterator foramen. So these three rami coming together that we form the alignment here that is harrowed at this point, and this is referred to as the obliterator foramen. Let's try further to see how this foramen is transformed into a canal. So we have the obliterator membrane. The obliterator membrane is a fibrous membrane sheet that is seen to cover the obliterator foramen. Remember, we already described the obliterator foramen in our previous slide, also establishing the structures that are seen to contribute to its formation. So this is where we have the obliterator foramen here at this point, harrowed in blue. So this foramen is seen to be incompletely covered by the obliterator membrane, and this is what is highlighted here in green. You can see that this obliterator membrane that is highlighted in green is covering the opening of the obliterator foramen, but the covering is not complete. So it has an incomplete covering of this foramen, thereby creating a space around this region. So this opening that it creates around this region here that is harrowed in blood is the obliterator canal. So you can see how a foramen, which is referred to as the obliterator foramen, is being transformed into the obliterator canal. And this transformation is done by the obliterator membrane. And this membrane specifically creates this transformation because of its incomplete covering of the obliterator foramen. So we have the obliterator canal created at this point. So this canal is not created for fun. It is created to allow for the passage of some vessels. So you have the passage of the obliterator artery. You have the passage of the obliterator vein and also the passage of the obliterator nerve. So you see the obliterator vessels assessing this canal and using it as a means through which they exit the pelvic cavity. We know that the obliterator artery is a branch of the internal iliac artery. It needs to exit this space so as to supply regions outside that space. And that is why it needs to pass through this canal for it to exit the pelvic cavity. So we also have the obliterator nerve. The obliterator nerve is one of the branches from the lumbar plexus. So this nerve also will pass through this canal for it to be able to innovate structures outside that space. So you can see how the obliterator foramen is being transformed into the obliterator canal by the obliterator membrane. And it does this because of the incomplete lining that the obliterator membrane exhibits within the obliterator foramen. So thanks for watching this video. Let's continue to stay glued to this channel.